Hey guys, it's Kelly and welcome back to my channel. Check out what is behind me. It's the brand new 2023 Honda Pilot. This is the fourth generation of the Pilot and Honda is calling it the king of the carpool lane. And they're calling it that because of its spacious interior and its flexible seating. I am so thankful to Frank Lita here in St. Louis for letting us tour this car this morning. I didn't think I'd get it out before the baby came, but here we are at 37 weeks pregnant with car seats and a dream to bring you this Honda Pilot Tour. This is the elite all-wheel drive trim level. It has an MSRP of $53,000. And today we are going to do a deep dive to see if these upgrades really make it the ultimate king of the carpool. If this is your first time joining me, hey, I'm Kelly and I'm the car mom. I review cars for moms and for families. I'm a mom of two, almost three, and I'm a certified child passenger safety technician. Let's get started. And if you're currently car shopping, make sure you check out all of our amazing resources at The Car Mom, including our brand new car buying course. It's an online course dedicated to empowering you to get the best deal on a car. You can find a link in the description box below. <laughs> Now, like I said, this is the fourth generation of the Honda Pilot, and this generation, number four, looks a lot more like number two than it did number three. I honestly, confession time, hated the look of the third generation Pilot. This is giving me everything I love in an SUV. It's boxy, it's muscular, it's sporty, it's off-roady, and it's, this, I honestly think the styling is simplistic, but interesting. I really love it even more than I thought I would after seeing it in person. Love how big this grill is with the beautiful Honda logo right here. I think this gray color is gorgeous with these wide hood lines that are coming across here. We have LED headlights that wrap around. Some good chrome elements found on this Elite trim level as well. And then let me have you come along to the side profile. We've got some great two-toned 20-inch rims. And then we move along to the rest of the body. It's giving sport, it's giving muscle, it's giving cool mom car. I love the roof rails on top right here. And then moving around to the back end, we start with some wraparound taillights. And this is probably one of my favorite parts of the car. I love this black bar here with the Pilot also in black. Double space spread out right there. I think that looks great. Uh, the way I am so in to this exterior, I think it's giving Telluride, it's giving Atlas. It's basically just like she's finally as cute as the rest of all of her friends were. This is like maybe one of my new favorite exteriors. Okay. Let's get into the inside. Take a look at this door panel. Best, you know what, I wanna know what is best in class? This freaking door panel. Obsessed with all of this storage. A door cup holder for the driver. Are you literally kidding? Are you, lit are you literally kidding? Plus a cubby here, a cubby there. A little change collector. I love the storage right here. Kind of an interesting design right here. It's like a, a bunch of little dots. Honestly, I don't, it's just something unique. Like it's not a wood trim. It's not brushed aluminum. Like it's something different to look at. Really excited about the cubbies. Let me get you out of the interior and we'll start breaking down some of these new technology and safety features. I already talked about my obsession with the door panel. Let's see if the rest of the interior holds up. Quickly right here, you do have a power trunk button, which I really like. And then we move into our dash. It's a completely digital gauge cluster, which I think looks really nice. It also has some pretty cool stuff like these, um, let me turn it back on and off really fast. It's got seatbelt reminders right there. So it has all eight seats. And then if you look at like the driver's seat has an X. And then once I buckle my seat in, it'll turn green. So I always love seeing that feature. And it's been found in a lot of family cars, but I think like for kids or for booster age kids, it's always a good reminder. Plus it's also nice to see in case you have a car seat installed with the seatbelt, if it ever were to become uninstalled accidentally, it would tell you right here. So I think it's a really nice feature to have. Moving into our steering wheel, it's leather wrapped um, with some steering wheel control buttons. We have our volume over here, our cruise control, and then our heated steering wheel. Steering wheel design looks fine. Nothing super crazy. One of the big misses for me, I'm gonna be honest, in the interior of this vehicle is this nine inch screen. Compared to the other cars in its class, it's not integrated, it's small, and there's just not a ton really to talk about. I wish it was integrated. I wish it was a little bit bigger. It just feels like for $53,000, I could find the screen in almost any vehicle. So I'm surprised that they went this small. However, one thing that is exciting is this vehicle does come with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which some of its other competitors like the Kia Telluride do not. They only have the plug-in Apple CarPlay. So the wireless is impressive. The technology is impressive. I'm just like, make the screen bigger and make it look less like an afterthought. I mean, it literally just looks plopped on right there. Um, I would have also have liked to have seen a rear view camera option, especially with this, them claiming this to be like, you know, a vehicle with a bench seat 
in both the second and the third row. Obviously that's going to obstruct visibility if you have passengers there. So having that rear view camera would have been a nice touch to make the car be a little safer when you have those passengers. So I'm disappointed to not see that. Okay, what else do we have? Love this though, the are you behaving mirror. I talk about this all the time. You can easily see your kids. Hey, are you behaving? Plus you have a sunglass holder as well. Beautiful panoramic sunroof in both the first and the second row, looking amazing. As far as the seats are concerned, super comfortable, heated and ventilated found on this trim level. We also have a wireless charger, USB, USB-C, driving modes, and the shifters found right here. It's just like all of Honda shifters, but I like that it's not a giant knob. It's not taking up a ton of space. And I just kind of like love all this free floating space. We have our wireless charger here, but then we also have some extra area there. Two great size cup holders. And then honestly, for the size of the car, a pretty kick butt center console. I'm gonna be honest. It's a pretty nice center console. Um, as like headrooms good, sorry, I'm kind of bouncing all over the place. It's just, these are like my first thoughts and I'm super excited. I just think this car feels a lot more functional. It's bigger. It is claiming that this is class leading overall passenger space. So I wanna talk a little bit about what that means before we get onto the rest of the tour. Basically what they're saying is it's the biggest car in its class. And I think like that's a little bit of a, tough statement to make because it's like how are you measuring it and just because you have like the longest number on paper doesn't mean it's the most functional for families however this car is big this car is now competing with some of the largest cars like the chevy traverse the atlas the jeep grand cherokee l the buick enclave this is now up there with one of the larger of the midsize suvs um, this new pilot is 199 inches the chevy traverse the largest midsize suv is 205 so it's quite a bit bigger than the outgoing pilot especially when it comes to the third row in the trunk space not quite as big as the traverse however it might be more functional and that is what we are going to dive into you guys are going to die when you see the second row. Okay, some things about the safety features for this car. I don't wanna get it wrong, so I'm gonna read from my notes. So it has updated Honda Sensing, which is their crash prevention technology package. So of course, we're gonna have all the things like blind spot, traffic jam assist, adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, all the things. One thing that I'm excited about that they did add was the rear seat reminder. So basically, if you open up that back door before you get in the driver's seat, basically saying like you open up the back door, you possibly put a child in there. When you turn off the vehicle, it will remind you to check the back seat. We see a lot of SUVs and cars add this feature to help prevent children being left in vehicles. So was happy to see Honda include that on this 23 model. Besides that, all the crash prevention technology you could ever want, need, love, and it's all avail available standard. Plus let's take a look at the backup camera. It is actually a very nice angle. Um, the new camera has a wider 90 degree field view and a wide angle radar of 120 degree field view. So basically it's a bigger camera. You've got all the different angles. You can see all the different things. Okay. I need to stop talking about up here because the real star is what's going on back there. Okay. King of the carpool lane. Although I'm going to be honest, I'm going to rebrand it to the queen of the carpool lane. Let's talk about your car seat setup. So this is an eight passenger vehicle. There's eight seat belts. Can you fit eight things? No, I'll tell you that in a little bit. But as far as the car seat hardware setup is concerned, when you have this eight passenger option in the second row, every seat has a set of lower anchors and tether anchors, A++. In the third row, 3P, so the third, pa third row passenger seat has lower anchors. And then we have three tether anchors across the third row bench as well. That's a total of four sets of lower anchors and six tether anchors, which on paper, it looks pretty good. So let's take a look at the clearance we're dealing with. I have two car seats that I brought with me today. This is a Gray Coast Slim Fit LX3 installed forward facing and then a Kleck Ling infant seat, obviously installed rear facing, ones with the seatbelt, ones with latch. Both were very easy to install. We also have sunshades, which is super exciting. Some more fabulous door compartments, especially for those older passengers, door cup holders, all the things I know and I love. One major miss, Honda, major miss, babe, no ceiling vents. Can't be the king of the carpool lane if the kids can't get proper ventilation. Just gonna let you know that right now. Would have loved to seen ceiling vents. However, as you can tell, that middle seat is open. Let's see if I can fill it. Do not fill me getting into this car right now. Okay, here's a shot of me in the middle seat between these two car seats at 37 weeks pregnant. Can't imagine this is my most flattering angle. However, <laughs> I do just want to point out how nice and wide this bench is. We have three separate seats back here. That means we have a lot of flexibility for some three across combinations, making this a great car for multiple children in car seats. I'm going to talk about a few of my amenities before we get to the rest of it. Heated seats on the outboard seats, climate control, 
uh, 12 volt, two USB leather back pockets. We already talked about that. No ceiling vents, sunshades. Overall, it's a pretty comfortable second row. But here's the cool thing. This seat that I'm sitting on is removable. Okay, I wanna talk about a few more things about the second row now that the car seats are out of here. First of all, here's what an actual adult looks like in the second row. I have this seat set for myself. I'm about six feet tall. Great knee clearance. I'm not bleeding over into this middle seat. I mean, I like how deep and boxy and comfortable this bench seat is. This is a great bench seat. Other manufacturers need to be taking note of this. Okay, what else did I wanna say? Oh, check this out. Look how easy these lower anchors are. They're so nice and exposed, making it absolutely stunning. We get our third row seat belt right from here from the ceiling, so you just pull that down, uh, clip it into here and then there. Plus, if you wanted to just have some more cup holders for these passengers, we have two cup holders and some change, like a little change or wallet collector right here. Okay, let's talk about third row access What if you were utilizing the bench seat, okay? So two ways to do it, there's a button up there, I would opt for this one. I love when they put them down here because think about who's getting to the third row. Seven year olds, right? So like why put them up here where they're harder to do or it's a difficult lever? This button, super easy to press. Everything tilts and slide forward. And then you have pretty decent third row access. These seats are also on track so they can move more forward or backward to accommodate more or less third row leg room. Now, as promised, let me take out this middle seat. Okay, this middle seat can be removable so then you can diy this to make your own captain's chairs what's also so exciting about this is this is the elite trim level the highest trim level we can get a kick-ass bench and we can get captain's chairs and that's the kind of versatility us mothers are looking for let me show you how to do it boom easy breezy beautiful cover girl okay it gets freaking better because honda's like where are they where are the mom's gonna put it and we're like i don't know probably our garage and they're like, we have a better idea. I'll meet you at the trunk. Hey guys, check this out. They're like, you put it in the trunks, mom. You put it in the trunk, it's always with you. And if you don't wanna do that, then you just have extra storage back here. You can't lose. Love, love. Okay, so that's what I love. Now let's get to the third row and I'll tell you what I hate. Okay, here I am in the third row of the Honda Pilot. Um, this seat pushed basically all the way back. My knees aren't touching. I'm honestly decently comfortable. I'm, imp I'm most impressed with my head clearance, I think. Sometimes when I get to these third rows, they're so tight or they have like that more stadium style seating where like my knees are literally to my chest. Subaru Ascend, I'm looking at you. This feels a lot better. Vents are on the side, which I like. Two cup holders and a USB-C on both sides. So like it's got the things. Lower anchors on this seat. Here's what I don't like. This, look at this little middle seat. What is this the size of? Was that seven inches? Okay. Doesn't fit a thing. Put your daughter's American Girl out there, people. That's all it will fit. And that just frustrates me because, like, it's not an eight-passenger car. This is, And, like, it's a really good seven-passenger car. This is just a joke. So this is not an eight-passenger car. Don't listen to what Honda says. Listen to what the car arm says. Hate to see this. Sh Honda, advertise eight of something in here, then, if you're so confident. Advertise eight of something. Oh, you won't. Okay. So anyway, besides that, these two seats are four third row comfortable this seat especially and i'm excited to see them put the lower anchors on this full seat because if you look at how this is like a 60 40 split bench this is the big seat this seat looks basically just like that seat so this is a really good third row seat this one's okay this one is a joke hate to see it and then obviously as you can see we have our aisle with that removable middle seat now i think that's just a 10 out of 10. i'm very excited Exiting the third row, we have a button on the back of the seat. Super easy. I mean, it's pretty good, you guys. Okay, let's talk about this new and improved trunk space. So I already showed you had extra space underneath here. Here is our trunk space with the third row up. Honestly, pretty good. I'm sorry, I don't have a stroller, you guys. I couldn't do it all today. Um, I think some strollers would work, work some strollers wouldn't. Like, it's not like my favorite for a, probably a double, but if you removed this, you'd have all the room in the world. I would have also, I mean, I guess this is nice that this is removable. I would have loved to have seen this on hinges though. Like we find in the Nissan Pathfinder where it's just like, it stays up. Cause it's just, you have to take it off. I think it's kind of interesting. These seats also can recline. And then they lay completely flat. You can either, no, you can't press that button. Just by pulling this lever and pushing it forward. Everything's laid completely flat. No way to put down the second row from back here, which is a little bit surprising. 
don't feel like anyone's like using that feature that much, but everyone else has it, so it feels like, why don't you? Okay guys, so that's going to wrap up this 2023 Honda Pilot tour. So happy I got this tour out before I got this baby out. This was such a treat. I'm so excited about these improvements, and I think this is a great option for those families deciding between midsize and full size. I know that can be such a big jump to think like, do I want this or do I want an Expedition? This time the Pilot definitely offers some versatility, some cargo space, and I'm pretty overall impressed. Again, if anyone's listening, your middle seat's a joke, add a car seat tilt, have a bigger screen, add ceiling vents. Besides that, Honda, I'm impressed.